Okay, so my name is Brett Worsham. I'm the Assistant Strength and District Coach here at Weber. Uh, what we're going to go over today is something I've fallen in love with the past over a year now. Uh, really learning how to progress your athletes in a proper way. So, obviously, it's taught today a, system, a systematic approach for training progressions. Uh, so, what's the, what we're going to cover? What is the main goal of why we do progressions? Regressions for the squat, deadlift, and the bench. I'm just going to cover these three today. Uh, how and when to progress. Uh, evaluate your athletes' weaknesses and how to help them. And we'll be talking about that throughout. And then what all young athletes need in their training. Uh, this is obviously just something that I found out from programming and coaching myself. Uh, then obviously talking to other coaches. So what is the main goal? The main goal is simple to get all athletes to move in a functional pattern to help them build strength, power, and mostly stay healthy. Okay, so yes, we, we are somewhat number chasers, but if they can't do it in a squat at the proper depth, doing the proper mechanics, all we're going to do is set them up for failure later on down the road. So this will help decrease injuries in sports and help in everyday life. This goes way beyond athletics. Okay. This goes way beyond athletics. That's something I want to get past you. At the level I'm at right now, in the younger athletes, it's not just about you know, getting to the next level, although that's a lot of their goals. But at the end of the day, you're not going to play your sport forever. At the end of the day, definitely, you know, with me, I, play, I work with men's basketball. I help with football, and I help with baseball. Those sports, by the age of 45 at the latest, yeah. okay? So we want to make sure we're helping them get in better patterns, not only instead of lifestyle, okay? Lifestyle, okay, to help them perform later on down the road. That's my main approach when I work with athletics. I help build athletes, but they can't do what a normal, normal person should do, well, I want to keep on progressing them. And then, this all comes down to one word for me. That's posture. Okay? Take care of the upper and lower cross syndromes and any imbalances else we, you know, we'll see down the road. So, progressions for my squat. Very simple, day one. Definitely my JV guys came in this fall. Show me a bodyweight squat. Okay? Lunge forward all over toes, okay? Or you'll see the real exaggeration ones of the kids that have been, you know, battling an ankle or a knee injury, they never finish their rehab, and they'll lean more to one side than the other on their weight up. So they come down all the way, and then they'll try to stand up on the other leg. Or possibly even the same leg they hurt, it's got so much stronger than the other. Okay, so what, anything we do in our squats, okay, one cue I always say, I go get an athlete right now, what's the first thing I say when we start a squat, what's the first thing that moves? Hips. Hips start the movement, not a knee dive. Okay, if an athlete has a hard enough time keep their core control and start to sit back, they sit back at their hips. Okay, we're already starting to fall into disadvantage. For me, what I've seen is mostly being glute activation. Okay, or it's just, you know, they just don't know what they're doing. It could be just a natural, how they just always squat, ever since they learned how to squat, no one's really caught that. Okay, so athletes come in, and they go straight to a knee dive. Straight here, and then they always want to keep their chest straight up, the back up, back straight. Okay, we'll go over that one a little bit here in a second. But what I'm looking for, any squat, toes either straight ahead, slightly out, Okay, looking straight ahead, core is tight. If I come up and punch in your stomach, it should be tight. Okay, they sit back with their hips, and they start to descend. Knees never go over toes, getting all the way down to depth. Okay, spread the floor. This is a term that we use here at Weber. Okay, you want to put all your force, spread your feet out. Okay, corkscrew. I know if you're you listening to Chad Weston Smith, juggernaut, guru. Okay, he says corkscrew. Screw your feet into the floor. You're going to push all that pressure to the outside try to stand yourself up. Okay? 
Something that I believe a lot of athletes, well, a lot of coaches say, is chest up, head up. Notice when I gave those coaching cues, I said, look straight ahead. If you're looking straight ahead, my spine, I have no extreme lordosis. I can sit back, get down all the way to depth, stand up. If I look up and I got 300, 400, whatever, 500 pounds on my back, I'm starting to arch my back like crazy now. And then when I start that descend, okay, it's just putting more and more force on that lower back. I'm looking for a neutral spot. Personally, when I see people squat, uh, we'll go over that a little bit more when we get into the actual squat itself. Okay, goblet squat. Next progression up. I'll spend maybe a day on body weight. If that, I'll usually get into a goblet pretty quick. Okay. Goblet squat. Everything's the same. Now I'm going to start putting a little bit of force into them. Okay. This is another way. You can go just sandbags, kettlebells. I love dumbbells. Okay. Same thing. Hold it. Hands underneath the head of the dumbbell. Come here. Sit back, squat down, come up. Now, I will load this up, okay? I've got a little dumbbell today just so I can actually talk to you and represent. I'll load this up as heavy as I can. 120 pound dumbbells, I'll throw sandbags in their arm, whatever it needs to do. I'll add a tempo to it, okay? I'm not, I'll play with try to face a little bit. I love the, you know, how it's locked off. There's an eccentric load, a not so uh, section, also block, I'm sorry, and then concentric. Once I see they can handle the eccentric load, still keeping their technique, isometric, still holding their technique, with challenging weight, then I'll go to the next one. Okay? Now, obviously, for some people, it's going to be a breeze. Okay, definitely the goblet. Next one, so that we've done here at Weber. Uh, belt squat. Now, obviously, we don't have really much room for a pit, a uh, pit shark. So, Virginia rigged up a landmine. So, the bar on the landmine. Okay. We have spud belts. You get these on Lee FTS where you go through spud belts itself. Okay. I'm not sponsoring them. I'm just saying there's a company that we've used. Okay. I'm not endorsing by any means. But it's a good belt. It held up for us. And we've put a lot of weight on the bar with some of our athletes. Okay, so how we jimmy rig it? Like I said, bars in the landmine. We usually wrap a band around it. We also have an attachment that goes over the bar and we'll tie it in. Okay, use two fat grips. Make sure the belt doesn't slide. Rubber 45s because we added a chain because we feel like uh, we don't want to buy any more clips. So pretty simple. Put the belt around. Step onto the rubber weights to elevate yourself a little bit. Put the clip, clip it in. Make sure the chain is on the bar. Slide the bar, the uh, belt down. A lot of people have this on the upper lower back, I guess you could say, their mid back. So uh, we'll have a spotter here, usually. Pull the belt out of the way. And everything's the same. All I'm doing now is loading up, okay? I'm taking all the pressure off the back. Okay, I gotta brace my core a little bit still, but I'm still not doing a lot of hardcore core training in this aspect. I'm training the legs, so everything's the same. Okay, sitting back, get down as far as we can into depth, back up. Once again, still spreading the floor. Still spreading the floor, activate my glutes, head straight ahead, spread the floor on the way up. Simple, okay? Obviously, they'll never go by themselves with this. Uh, now, I'll say this. Personally, the risk versus reward, the rewards are way high. Okay, but the risk is there with this exercise, my opinion. Okay, spotting is the most crucial aspect of this. If you see someone spotting this, There's two people going to get hurt. The person who's squatting with you falls, and the person who ever spotting like this. I'll practice a I'll tell them deadlift technique. Okay? 
Lock in, squat with the bar, come up. Okay, you get another reps. So that's something that I do with the belt squat. Uh, once again, I'll add in different tempos with that. Uh, next one, <laughs> Zercher squats. Clean this up a little bit. So think of the Zercher squats. I think this is the best one getting true core activation. You're going to get a little bit of lower back, yes. Okay, I'm not saying that's a bad thing by any means. But now I'm actually, I feel like I'll get the most straight into true abdominal reason. Abdominal region, I'm sorry. So, for whoever doesn't know the Zercher squat, bars in the elbows, hands on top of hands. Okay, hands on top of hands. I think when you go like this, you're, op you're opening yourself up to ditch. I want here, squeeze it tight, flex your biceps. Okay, everything's the same after that. Same squat we've gone through. Now you gotta, you gotta challenge yourself to keep everything straight. Okay, so people, you can't just ditch forward. Okay, chest up, sit back, get down to depth, come up. I don't try to raise up the bar because I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on my shoulders. I want to just rest it. Okay, squeeze them hard. Now, this, I believe, is the safest squat we can do. Okay, one reason. You still keep it inside the safety in the squat rack, they can't get it, <laughs> they're maybe dropping an extra inch. Okay, how our squats are set up, we use hammer strength. Okay, they're dropping maybe an inch and they're there. There's, they don't have to crawl, try to crawl under a bar, they're not getting stuck under, it's there. Okay, belt squat, they're not getting pinned to the ground. Next one we got front squat. Okay, on the front squat, I have a love slash hate relationship with straps. Okay, I'll tell you it's another mobility reason. Okay, as you can see right now, I'm pretty tight. Lats are tight, forearms tight, everything you're gonna say is tight. Okay, but I think it's a crucial, uh, very crucial for anyone. To get into this position. Definitely if you're going to start at an Olympics. Okay? So, another cue. One that we always heard here when we talk about front squats, elbows up. Drop your elbows up on the way up. Okay? Everything's the same. Okay? You sit back in the control, get that. Drop, keep my elbows up the whole time. Looking straight ahead. Now, the thing with this, okay? I love doing this. At the exact same time, I'm finally getting to my progression for my squat. Okay, I'm sorry, my deadlifts. Well, I'm going to my clean stuff. I try to, perfect squat, it all evens out at the same time. It all comes together at the same time. I deadlift in my front squat, and next thing you know, I got progression for my actual cleans. So, I'll add front squats in. I try to add them in to the end of the season with JV football. I never got to it really with my, uh, any of my basketball teams. Just didn't feel like he was there. Uh, now, next one we got is my absolute favorite. Okay? This is one that I actually did feel comfortable with all my athletes doing for the most part. Uh, by the way, front squat's kind of a hit or miss for me. I either love doing it with my athletes or I try to stay, try to stay away from it. I use it mostly for Olympic progressions reasons. From really getting into the Olympics with that team. But the next one we got is box squat. So, here's the fun one. Which one's a belt squat? My bad. A box squat, everyone. Is this a box squat? No. Okay, box squat. Sit, pause, go. Sit, pause, go. You should see, core stays tight. I'm sitting back far as I can, staying on those heels. Hips get loose and I drive up. Once again, sit back as far as I can. Notice shins. Straight up and down, perpendicular with the floor. Okay? You come up. Everything's tight. Sit. Hips get loose. Go. Sit. Pause. Go. You'll be shocked how many athletes 
We'll use it as a depth marker. And say they're getting the same activation. They're getting back far. Yeah, they're sitting back, but they're still using it as a depth marker. They're using that recoil to get them back up if they have a rear end tool. Okay? We really want them to sit down, control it. Okay? It's all breaking it down. Okay, this, I love this one. I'm getting an eccentric load they have to think about. They're getting an isometric stimulant, and then they have to do, then they have to explode. I'll do this one all year round. Once I feel comfortable with my athletes. Okay, it's not just I like doing it in the season. Okay, I'm getting I'm getting a little bit of an eccentric load with them, but it won't kill them completely unless I put an eccentric with it. But yeah, I use this as a dynamic effort exercise. Because I can really line the weight up, they sit, they pause, and they explode. Okay, next one, the ones we don't already have to talk about, is the squat. Okay. Here's my thing on squat. Feet do not matter. Where the bar position does not matter as long as it's not resting on that bone on the top of their, uh, right on top by the bone of their neck. Sit on the meat. I know I have a lot of guys who are low bar squatters. I never taught them that. That's where they feel most comfortable. My thing, I tell athletes, go to where you feel most comfortable, and then we'll adjust where we need to. Have a little Sheldon Durant. Sheldon is 5'7", and he's on stilts, 140 pounds soaking wet on a good day. Okay? He's a low bar wide stand squatter. He'll load up 225 and rep it for fun. And get that, he's got great hip mobility. Okay? Then I have Slim, my 6'7, 180, 190-pound post. Feet just outside, bar high, gets dead. Okay? Why would I change them up? That's what they're most comfortable with. That's why they feel like they're gonna get the most translation to the sport. Okay? So um, another thing athletes really, I think coaches in general have a hard time with this. I promise I'll speed up on the others. Okay, the rest of them. Elbows. Your elbow, your forearm angle, okay, is going directly represent your chest angle to it is to the ground. Press the bar up. Okay, I'm looking straight ahead, my chest is up, not chest up, chest straight ahead, eyes straight ahead. I squat down, my elbows stay at the same angle. Only time I tell an athlete that he needs to keep everything up is unless he is going to a 90 degree angle when he squats. If it's a 45 degree angle, I'm not too worried about it. Truthfully, that's me. Because we're starting to get a little bit of back training. Definitely when we get to this box squat and true squat, we're going to get some lower back training. Um, we got any questions on the squats before I go on? Okay. For the deadlift, they must be able to do body weight squats before even attempting. I think it's pretty self explanatory. Uh, I'm sorry, little Johnny, you can't get at the parallel, but I'm going to still put 225 pounds in your hand and tell you to deadlift it as you go into a complete rounded back and angles are tight. All kinds of messed up form. They have to be able to do a body weight squat. That's the, it's a basic. You know, why would why would I want to load up weight on squat? And definitely when I'm going to a more advanced, I'm sorry, this is a more advanced exercise than squat. Definitely since we're starting from a dead stop to go. You don't get to fill the weight out before you play with it. You gotta go, well, okay, this is a new PR for me. I'm dealing with a lot of weight. You should just automatically know that. Um, first thing we're gonna go through, goblet deadlift. So, same as the goblet squat, except I'm starting from the ground. All my coaching cues are the same for the deadlift as they are on the squat. Look straight ahead, chest straight ahead, everything's tight. Only thing is, I really don't start focusing on using my back a whole lot more squeezing the lats. Definitely before I get to a bar, I'm going to teach them that. Okay, I'm going down, I'm sitting in tight. I'm already starting to corkscrew. I'm sitting down to control. I come up. Okay. Once again, look straight ahead, big chest, 
Everything straight. Notice my knees are still out over my toes. And I stand up. So, this is also, I can use this as an evaluation time. Because on squats, they can still cheat me, I don't really know it. But if I'm telling them to get down to a squat and hold for a second, okay, definitely when they haven't really picked up any resistance, they have nothing else to help them force down, okay? I can see if, they got, if there's ankle mobility issues. So, next progression I use for this, deficits. Love them. Definitely, with my big guys who have a lot of mobility issues, I'll put this into warm-ups. Start getting them into the moving pattern. So my feet are the exact same as they were over here when I was doing the belt squat. Okay? Now I have to get deeper. Notice everything. I still keep all my weight in my heels. Try to keep everything tight as I can. And I stand up, spread the floor. Okay? It's nothing crazy. A lot of this stuff is a lot of this paid attention to the little details that you, know, you might have to you have to see to progress. Like I said, I'll load this up heavy. Once you see me get to a goblet, that's when I start challenging athletes with more weight, more tempos. Um, next one we got tri bar deadlift. Now, I think we all at least seen these before. I'm not sure how many of y'all have used them. This one. Translate more to the squat than it does to the back squat. Coach Ed preaches that to me every day. We talk if we ever bring up trap bar deadlift. Yes, it does. Okay, but yet I'm also changing it's all levels. Okay, I'm starting to add more resistance to different areas that I actually have to start engaging my lats a lot more. And I have to start using my grip. That's the main one. I'm trying to, I'm starting to use my grip more, and I'm still starting to perfect my squat pattern. So, every athlete's going to be different on where they need things. Let me move these out of the way. So, setup wise, taller athletes, if you got these one like ours, athletes, your taller athletes have to use the higher handles. If you're not using the higher handles, you got to put blocks on, mm, Sure, but my thing is I'm starting to work more grip again. Every athlete needs grip. That's one thing I'm trying to you know, really understand as I go through things. So, once again, we start down in the dead position, down to the ground. I'm looking straight ahead, down, everything's straight. Notice my back's not super arching. Okay, everything's tight, I'm sitting down, spreading the floor, so stand up. This is also another time that you can add mini bands. You can do mini bands and squats too. Me personally, I'd rather use the mini bands go around your legs to help the valgus issues. That's most athletes. Um, next one, sumo. This is hands down my favorite deadlift we can do. Anybody want to give me a reason why? No one? All right. So, hip mobility. So, my people say when you do your sumo deadlift, your feet got to be all the way out to the edge. Okay. Go look at Dan Green. Dan Green right now holds the world record. Well, he did hold the world record. He still owns the world record for the raw deadlift. Okay? He's a sumo stance guy. One thing that he preaches, when you're down your down position, when you're down loading up the bar, your legs need to be straight up and down. If I get my feet out much water, okay, notice that shit angle's going out now. I'm putting a lot of straight right now. I can feel the my groin just cry. Okay, but yeah, I'm starting to put a lot, it's just a different angle, it's not going to have any advantage, as much as you think. Okay, yeah, I understand that there's a shorter range of, shorter range of motion you got to go through to fully extend, 
but you're never really getting on the bar. You're never going to be able to push my next cue. Your hips through. When you do a deadlift, okay, any deadlift, your first movement, a lot of times for athletes, they say, no, my back's arching. Down low, down, get low. Get down in that position, okay? I tell my athletes to push their hips through. So they're starting to push their hips through as they extend. Okay, once again, I'm not saying come straight up with it. I want those hips to come through and lock out so my legs can lock out. If you watch anyone deadlifts, where most people fail, so the legs are already locked out and they're still shaking over here trying to stand the bar up. Get your hips through first. I've been using that one now for three years. And I keep on getting better and better results with it. Just because the athlete's starting to get more of a movement pattern with it. Okay? Then, conventional deadlift. I like conventional. I desperately lost trust in the lower back. I use sumo year round, like I said. Conventional, I'll just use during off season. Too many long levers for me for conventional in season. I just think you start definitely my basketball guys who are six, seven, maybe higher. Uh, it put them, they're straining their back a little bit more than they're used to. Um, but I have used it. Uh, I like doing it conventional before I get into my clean deadlift. Coach Ed just showed me the clean deadlift, and Coach Wallace, I guess about three or four weeks ago. I added it in. Do I know it exactly by heart yet? No. Can I demonstrate it for you? Yeah, somewhat. I'm still learning it myself. Okay? But conventional deadlifts is going to be the same coach cues I've given for the squat and the rest of these deadlifts. Load in. Keep everything tight. Straight ahead, big chest. Heels. Hips through. Extend. You're locked out. What coaches get into with so many techniques, they start throwing all these things at your athletes, and they say, you know, they're completely confused. Okay? So, main focus is for a squat and our deadlift, once again, weights and heels, looking straight ahead, everything's in neutral. I'm locked in either on the back, I'm squeezing, trying to keep those elbows locked in, pushing up, bar over the deadlift, I'm trying to break. Okay? My core is always tight. It stays in the same position the whole lift. Okay? I'm always spreading the floor. Weight's always in the heels. I'm always extending. Me, personally, you cannot be powerful in your lower body. If you want to tell your athletes to jump, to sprint, and if they can't do these, they'll never be truly efficient. Okay, I guess you say I'm, in a way, I take this from Louis Simmons and at least it translates, it looks like it's translating the court for me right now. Hey, my basketball guys. The whole season we stay in strength zone. Basic strength. Old school, linear type basic strength. Rest games between eight and five. Nothing crazy. Okay? But we price the mechanics. I can change the intensities up on all these just by changing the exercise. So, we got any more questions? More or less on the lower body before I go on to upper. Okay. So, for my bench, I guarantee you, no other person in the country is even thinking about this when they do their bench progressions. Who thinks of doing a straight arm plank? None of you, I guarantee you. Uh, if they cannot lock in, Keep their core tight and do a basic push-up. First off, the athlete, has, the athlete has no core strength. Okay, this is where I can really tell. Okay. I'm sorry, the athlete comes down. He looks like this. Okay, use your core. Squeeze your abs. Now we're getting there. So, I'll do a straight arm plank. I'll do it for time. I'll do walks with it. Okay, that's also another shoulder stabilization, uh, warm up prep that I'll do. Okay, but the straight arm plank simple. Well, how about this? 
when you do push-ups, where are you putting your pressure in your hand? Okay? Where are most athletes starting to put the pressure in their hand? Mostly in this back part of the palm, right on the wrist. Okay. Make sure arms are going straight down, shoulders are in the line. Okay? Don't have to make sure they're not far behind. Make sure they're not walked all the way in front. Arms going straight down, perpendicular to the ground. I want pressure on my fingertips, palms, all that while I hold. And I brace. And I'm going to squeeze that core, squeeze my glutes, and I'm looking straight down. If you see your athletes look up at you as they do on a plank, they're no longer using their core. Because the first thing that happens when you extend your head and look up, okay, I squeeze my ass, I just want, I look up, I'm not looking up all the way, but my athletes look at me like this, all of a sudden we're using all my lower back. So, Really teach. Once again, you're looking straight. We don't look up. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing for push-ups. When people do push-ups, <laughs> first would kill me. Definitely, if you ever go out to a football practice here and they do punch me, you tell them to do push-ups. There's going to be about three different things. Well, I can tell you two off the top of my head. I guarantee there's the third one. I'll get going. Elbows are going to come straight out to the side. You're either going to do from the ground up, halfway extended, or from the top, halfway down, and it's oscillations. Okay? Full motion. Palms, fingertips, all the way down, all the way up. Once again, core's tight, pressure everywhere, elbows stay in, I come up. Come down, come up. I'm not winging. Okay? I'm not, well, I, call, I tell athletes all the time when they're benching, don't fly away on me. They're still doing the chicken wing dance. Everything's locked in. Your lats are more are engaged the whole time you're doing any form of upper body push. It's your shoulders, it's the major uh, shoulder stabilization. Okay? Then, I'll go with the push ups. As you see, bands. Always add bands. I got once again I got my sandbags. Okay, I can add weight. I got partner resistance. Whatever helps me get through. Okay, getting more weight at the top or throughout the whole motion. And then I have an elevator or a deficit, so they have to get more pec involvement again all the way down. Now I'll say this: I won't use elevated until they master this part. Okay, the bands and the weight. My thing is, if there's most of the time when athletes go all the way down to the ground, okay, and they're not strong enough to keep that everything tight, it's mostly because they're gonna start winging out on me. I want everything tight, everything tucked in. And the next one, dumbbell bench. So, what I do my here's this. Rather dumbbell. Dumbbell bench is pretty simple. But a lot of athletes don't understand. We're trying to keep the same technique that we just had on our bent, on our push-ups, I'm sorry. Every single athlete, once I say, all right, we're finally starting to bench. They go, I'll make them go straight to the first thing they remember. So, elbow goes out wide, they push up all chest, they twist, they turn, they don't use their core. And next thing you know, they're asking why I'm going back to push ups. Like, well, I demonstrated. You did it right one set. You kept it right, then you kept on trying to add weight when I said not to. And they're wondering, well, I'll go back down to weight. So, you know, just for the rest of the day, I guess you say it's more of a punishment thing, keeping kids reliable is, you know, take them back to down progression. Kids love, they always want to bench. That's it. You walk, into, you walk into our fitness center at 7 o'clock at night, guaranteeing about 50% mm, of the guys are in there benching. You maybe see 10% throughout the week that squat. Okay, so what I'm going to look for on the bench, the dumbbell bench, as they sit back, 
I want to see elbows always in. So I'm at the top. I'm trying to, I'm starting to imitate a barbell bench. I'm breaking the bar. Okay? My lats are tucked in. I'm tight. I lower it all the way down. And I come back up. I never want to see my, the kid, our athlete's elbows go straight out. Okay? Always want them in tight. Okay? That's going to be more of a natural movement for any sport. Um, then, lastly, barbell bench. Here's my thing on the barbell bench. It's optional. Your athletes will hate you at the moment and thank you later. Reason why. Athletes get, not all, but some athletes get locked into a bar and they start getting a lot of shoulder irritation. So, with dumbbells, if that, does, if that feels good, they keep on going. They feel more comfortable right in here benching with dumbbells, all power to them. But the majority of your athletes are going to be at the 45 degree angle or neutral. That's just what I've seen, what I've experienced with. Definitely in season. Okay, I don't care what sport you have. I don't care if it's baseball, football, basketball, badminton, bowling, tennis. Some's going, some, there's some form of something's bothering their shoulder. So give them something they're comfortable with. And then I think you can do more stuff with dumbbells. Okay, I'll go single arm. I'll go alternating, okay? I'll go straight up single arm. I can change up how I want it. Could be I say, okay, everyone's gonna be straight ahead, 45, neutral, whatever. I think there's a lot more variables that we can do with it uh, that most people might overlook. Um, something that I'm gonna put in for my basketball guys this offseason when we officially start. Uh, I'm not gonna, we're gonna go to a bar, okay? Any of my basketball guys will tell you, we never did a bar during the season, barbell bench. We stay with dumbbells and push-ups. We're gonna go to a bamboo bench, okay? It's like a, uh, so it's just all shoulder stabilization. But I'm gonna superset for the first week Straight on place. I'm not going to put a lot of weight on the bar first off. Okay? I'm actually just considering making them hold, stabilize, keep everything locked in. I think it's really going to spin your athlete. I think that's when we start finding another weaknesses. The main reason for progressions, okay, is to start individualizing it for the athlete. See what they need. Just because little Johnny can squat, once again, 500 pounds, doesn't mean he needs to be squatting 500 pounds. Okay, we're in the benefit of helping athletes have a better lifestyle besides just athletics. That will translate to athletics down the road. Okay? So, what all young athletes need in their training, besides what I've talked about, core development. Okay, a lot of people, when they say core, core for me is shoulder, shoulder blades, wrap right around, my bad, lower back, all your abs, obliques, transverse abdominis, and hips. That's your core. Okay? Get those areas strong and be able to move in all planes of motion. Okay? This is my favorite. Pull more than push. During the season, my basketball guys, I kept, I kept it reasonable. We did it. It was three to one pull to push. Three to one. Football, they're in season, my JV guys. I went a six to one pull to push ratio. Okay, here's my favorite thing about volume. Let's say, just, we're keeping it basic, let's say somebody did a thousand pounds worth of pushing that day. A thousand pounds. Okay. Let's just say I come in and I go four sets of five on an inverted row. Okay, that's 20. Okay, that's 20 reps total. That's still far from the 1,000. 
But yet you still have to, uh, you also have to weigh in, let's say I put a tempo to it. Okay, time under tension. So we're at 20, I say five second eccentric. All of a sudden, 20 times five is 100. And then, what's, how much do they weigh? Okay, volume. It's a beautiful thing. Once again, it's going back to take care of the upper and lower cross center. Both of those two things are. The next one, glute work as a whole. We already talked about the hips up there in core development. Hip bridges, hip thrusters, all the difference for me is a hip thruster you add weight. Okay? Uh, different types of band walks you can do, monster walks, um, mini band walks, whatever fires the glutes up. Okay? I've honestly, I've gone to a, I've laid guys down before who didn't know how to squeeze their glutes, laid them down on their back, say, all right, squeeze. Keep squeezing, hold it, and I'll hold it for 30 seconds, sometimes not for that long, and all of a sudden they start going into cramps in their glutes. They don't know how to contract and they don't know how to relax. Okay, that's the beautiful part about what I do for a living. I teach athletes to move in functional patterns and I teach them how to use the body efficiently. Um, truthfully, those th first three things, I should have had one of these down in here, hamstrings. Those first three things will make an athlete. Those first three things will make them quicker and be able to jump. The fourth one, make them the best athlete they can be. Move, only work in the set of movements. Get Squatting, bench, and deadlift. There's only one sport in the world that requires doing all three of those things. And it performs. You know, it exactly meditates what it does. And that's powerlifting. Get out of it. The reason I went over those three today is because I believe those are the basic three basic lists that you have to do. Okay? Those are the three basic lists you have to do to get basic strength. Okay? I'm going to my single leg progression. Okay? I'm going to my single leg progression. I can go into my glute, you know, hip bridge progressions. I'm going to a thousand different progressions. I got progressions for everything. Okay? But if an athlete cannot go into can't do not do anything in a lateral movement. They have a hard time opening up. Okay, we won't be able to get our athletes prepared for whatever they need to do in the arena. Okay, so that's going. Every athlete moves laterally, and every athlete has to open up. Every athlete, only athlete that doesn't strike the field, and that's a sprinter. Okay, next one, hamstrings. Hamstrings, hamstrings, hamstrings. I can't tell you how many times. You think how many hamstring issues that we've had in the past, you think we would have a better grip on it by now. Okay, things that help me with hamstrings. Working a tempo with my eccentric, working tempos with my isometric, working tempos with even my concentric. Okay? I don't have to just keep on adding weight to my leg curl or keep on glute hand raise. Add a tempo to it. On the way up, on the way down, hold it at different angles. Have fun with it. Okay? Next one, neck training. Okay. Once again, I've got a thousand different progressions. Uh, Ron Sizzik, the man I worked for when he was at the university, my first internship at the University of Memphis. He's now at Stanford. He's an assistant. Um, he's really into concussions. Okay. Trying to prevent them. I went along with his, I guess you say, his outline, different exercises he's done. Okay. And I started incorporating some of the other stuff that I've seen works over time with it. No different tempo work. The thing is, it's just, yes, you've got to do shrugs. I believe shrugs help tremendously with it. But also it's a range of motion thing. Every sport, every sport I've worked with, this is including bowling, I've done some form of neck training with. Okay? You don't know why bowling? I'll talk to you later because that, that one can get interesting. Then the acronym, KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. You do not want to get lost in your own training. We're wondering where you're at. Okay? So, when you set up your annual plan, you don't have to say, okay, so I'm going to go for a full week block of Westside Conjugate, then I'm going to go a four week block of I'm just going to work a four week block of East Central while I do my Westside Conjugate using all different types of mythologies. And next thing you know, I'm going to put it 
Then I will go to French contrast. And she, next thing you know, you're confusing yourself and your ethics. Yeah, I understand. You want to shock them? You need to constantly shock your ethics. But progressives can shock them. Okay? And then, obviously, don't confuse yourself to the point that you're going crazy and you don't know why your ethics aren't adjusted to the programming. Okay? I've done... This soft season, like I said, my bad. In season with Miss Basketball, I'll kept it basic. I will live by the acronym KISS. Okay? Definitely in season. Basic strength. Right there, we had one injury that held us out. Okay? Someone rolled their ankle. They're out for a week and a half. Everything else, we had a little bit of knee pain like every other basketball team's had, but nothing that held any of our guys out. Because I believe if you keep it simple, stupid, you won't save yourself a lot of issues, a lot of headache. Okay. Um, here is my contact information. Uh, my Weber, got my email, work phone, cell phone, fax. Uh, you also find me on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, my Twitter name is Coach Big Red. If you really want to know, once again, get on Twitter, follow me, and I might answer you there. And then also make sure you follow our strength staff here at Weber. Uh, Instagram, we're Weber Strength Staff, all one word. Facebook, just type it in, Weber Strength Staff, and on Twitter, at Weber Strength. Okay, uh, if you have any questions for me, uh, I'll be able to decide. Come over and talk to me. Love to.